Hi there, YouTube. It's good to see you again. Uh, it's been a while since the last episode of this. You might see I look a little different. <sighs> of course, someone redeems it right as I start the recording. YouTube, this is for you. Because someone redeemed it. I will! I gotta put that on the higher cooldown. <laughs> Damn it. The joys of being a streamer, huh? Yeah, it's a choice of also being a dog girl. Allow me to properly introduce my guests. I have with me Ray Draw Stuff. Hello. Who is a imprisoned uh, Coca Cola fiend? The, oh, yeah, Coca Cola. Not just Coke. I'm a Coke addict, but it's Coca Cola. <laughs> God damn it, Ray. He's a wonderful person. He's also a really great art senpai of mine. Speaking of art senpai. Next to Ray, we have Ocean X. Hello. That's me. And I have Bettles. Hiya, folks. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. And I want to say, again, thank you for being here. And today's episode is going to be all about... It's, it's going to be talking about voice training and overcoming vocal dysphoria and that it's not it, it, it's not it's not a journey with an end goal in mind you know what i mean Ooh. You, you should not go in expecting okay i want to just sound like this and then be done with it. It, it it should be it, it should be a constant journey in my opinion you should have some goals in mind, but when you hit that goal, be ready to move to the next one. Like, hey, I want to sound a little bit like this, but I also want to sound a bit like this without straining my throat. Hey, I want to, you know, sound kind of like that. Or maybe you're like me, who starts off their journey thinking, I never want to sound like this again. And then cycle back to it and become very, very comfortable with it. I, I, I've gone around in my own personal journey, and when I started, I was in this kind of range all the time, no real uh, variance, and I never thought I would get to where I am. But as I got here, I realized that's still a part of me, and I still want to, you know, go back to it a little bit. You know what I mean? Of course, like, you you can't always forget your past, even when you're moving forward. And for some people, that's that's what they do. For some people, that's, you know, that's kind of their thing. But for other people, you know, they just want to, they just want to go one oh, way. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Exactly. That's fine, too. Sorry, Ray, did you say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, it was kind of the same thing for me, where... For me, because I, I went on testosterone and I went on testosterone for five years thinking it would be this miracle drug that would give me a nice baritone. Um, but then I learned half of it is, uh, no, I just kind of had to figure out where to talk, get comfortable with my voice and the fact that after a certain point, it wasn't going to change. Um, and yeah. So it was it was a lot of frustration in the beginning, but overall learning that like, you know what, this is this is my voice and this is what it's going to be. Yeah, I, I think that's a big, big misconception with uh, hormones and all that, because a lot of times people are like, OK, so th this will give me a this will give me like a second puberty. This will like help me with my voice. Um, mm -hmm. Bit of a misnomer, bit of a uh, bit of a like, yes and no. Yeah. And I, I do believe that testosterone does have a slight effect on, uh, you know, you're biologically female and you take testosterone, uh, it will slightly thicken the vocal cords, but it's obviously not like anywhere near as much an effect yeah. as, um, yeah. It's an individual by individual basis. Yeah. Because yep. hormones affect and people differently. Like we're still learning about hormones to this day. Mm hmm Yep, and that's what, because that's what everyone was like, oh, but you were on it for five years, why do you still sound like that? I'm like, first of all, don't. But also, uh, it just, that's just not what worked for me. Out of everything that changed, my voice 
which was kind of disappointing at first and it was a lot of acceptance because i was like that was the main thing i was after but my voice just didn't my voice just didn't change it changed a lot but overall it didn't change how i thought it would but we worked through it yeah yeah. It's a process. And yeah, hormones affect everyone differently. Like, um, I didn't really get a deepened voice when I went through my first puberty. And then, uh, because like the whole like male puberty stretches out your vocal cords so you can get a deeper tone. But that's all a matter of, you know, if depending on how the hormones affect you. And e even more so for FTM, it's it could affect them differently. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if the person is comfortable with their voice, all the better, because vocal dysphoria, for, to me, is like the number one source of dysphoria. Like, I I'm happy, like, people don't even hear me talk and they still think, they still say, ma'am, ma'am, miss, and I'm like, you know what? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I I'm not confident in my looks, but you know what? You gave me the confidence boost. But before I started anything like that, it, it was my voice because I just didn't want to talk to people because it would be like a dead giveaway. But now it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine being who I am. And that, that's kind of like the quote unquote ultimate end goal of so, self-acceptance. Yeah, for, for, for anyone, mm -hmm. in my opinion. If you, can, if you can be happy with yourself, other people will follow in suit very true and it's the people that don't uh they can just say bye bye yeah okay. like I, I had someone in my chat a couple of months ago who was like oh you're such a cute girl i'm like well thank you very much I'm like why do you sound like that because i choose to bye mm-hmm kind of stuff's always great, isn't it? Yeah. But I, I, I've developed a personal philosophy for people that just kind of like come in and try to drag you for your voice. All you have to do to, all you have to, do to them is just say, hey, uh, I just met you and you sound crazy. So why don't you go fuck off maybe? <laughs> Plain and simple. <laughs> it's effective. Yeah, I mean, it's something that you do for you. Right, it's not something that you should do for other people. Man, if only um, I could apply that to my art. I mean... I don't know, I got, it would go off topic if we started talking yeah, about true, art true. right now. True, true, true. <laughs> but, yeah. I could talk about that for ages. Y your don't, voice don't and your own personal journey is for you. Hi, Buttercup! The cat says hi, everyone. Oh, hi, Hello, Mark. Hey, cat! What's wrong, baby? I'm joy. Yeah, okay. I love you, too. Hi there, Jade! Can we get a shout-out for Jade Callisto? Welcome on in, Raiders. We're just having an episode oh, of the Transcribe Raiders. But, yeah, but back to the whole, like, it's a journey of self-acceptance. Um, mm -hmm. I accepted myself along my journey to the... Like, I didn't want to have this type of a voice at first. I, I didn't want to have this type of a voice at first, but I'm happy with it now. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to sound like my old self ever again. But then I was like, you know what? I'm happy with that. So it, 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 just because you accept yourself as you are at that moment doesn't mean you can accept other parts of yourself. And there's no, there's no one wrong way to go about it, in my personal opinion. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely not. It's it's about doing what's best for you, both mentally and, like, emotionally. Like, it, it's so huge to just take care of yourself. Yeah, a big thing for me, I don't know what... I guess oh, hi, COVID, Mark. it was a hectic moment for, for everyone else. But for me, I don't know how. It was like I was in a little cocoon during lockdown and something just clicked finally of just kind of like accepting myself because I did. I hit my five years on tea during COVID and I'm not on tea anymore for the sake of my hairline. Um, but 
literally it it i did the math i did everything i'm like all right you know what everything that i wanted to change uh has mostly changed my voice isn't going to change anymore i did the research and that's fine uh my voice is still pretty feminine but you know what if if at least like my how i processed it was like if someone sees me across the street and i can get a sir or if i can get a sir a couple of times at work that's all i need or even just the idea that someone has to think about it the idea that someone has to even think about what to refer to me as a stranger that is uh gave me a lot a lot a lot of serotonin <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, yeah, th 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 that's the thing. Uh, and you know what? If you ever want to do some voice training, I can always recommend some tutorials. I can always recommend my own personal uh, method. My personal method when I started it was um, I had a vocal coach and we went through scales a lot. We went through a lot of scales. And we had to make sure that we sloped the scales, not not a uh, not a staircase. Like it wasn't uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, it, we had to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It had to be smooth, and to get that level of control, that alone was enough to like give me the ability to do this now. Like, uh, if I'm allowed to flex a little bit, if I absolutely put some effort into it without any warm-ups, I can get my voice all the way up here. And at the flip of a switch, I can drop it down here. Not bad. And that's Oh, just... hi, Mark. Oh, welcome on in, Creepshow. I like that name. <laughs> oh, hi, Skylet. I... Personally, um, uh, I, I, I'm happy I got to this range because I can use this weird, weird talent of mine now to help other people out with their to, to help other people out with their journey if they want to. Like, hey, do you do you are, are you looking for just some vocal some vocal training? Or are you just looking to be more affirmed in yourself? Like, what what are you looking for? And that's like the whole purpose of this podcast Ooh. because vocal lessons I don't know if any of you have like had a vocal coach or like saw or like looked up prices for vocal lessons oh it, it's ridiculous like yeah they're quite expensive dollars. yeah yeah for, for me even with a coupon it was $80 a week and I did that for 8 months holy and I'm like I'm happy I got to where I am. I'm comfortable with where I am. And you know what? If I can help people out for free... Uh, you better believe your butt I will. Oh, absolutely. I, I did vocal lessons too, and it's like, this cost me like a few hundred bucks. I, I'm gonna teach people for free. That's not worth it. Exactly. Yes, that was a big problem for me, was the... When I was looking into it, and I was just like, I'm just gonna go to YouTube, man, because it was like uh, over a hundred dollars a lesson, and I, that's you no, know, the accessibility for that is outrageous. Yeah, and that th that's another whole part of another journey. Like, hey, are are you looking to just do some basic tutorials? Are you looking for some specialized training? Uh, th th there's no one wrong way to go about it, and there's a lot of different techniques out there. Like, there's a whole, like, feel your larynx, there's a whole, like, head voice. There's a lot of different techniques and methodologies out there, and some might not work for people. Some might not work for you, some might not work for this person. It's all a matter of finding what works for you, what's most comfortable. Like, it, 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 I, I can apply, like, art and writing to that as well. Like, I was speaking with Ray last night <clears throat> during his uh, art stream. I admire Ray's ability to do this, like, slight mix of cell shading and soft shading. I myself just have tried soft shading. I'm not a fan of soft shading, and I prefer cell shading because it's more comfortable for me. It, mm. it's, it's more valid for me. And, like, the same 
the same ideology can be applied to your journey of acceptance. Like some people don't want to do voice training. Some people want to do voice training. It's all a matter of finding what you are comfortable with and what you are happy with. You should come first. Your happiness matters. Also, we have a hydrate, a posture check, and a stretch. And I taking a sip or two. I'll do it. I'll join. <clears throat> worth it. So, Osho. Sip moment. Oh, yeah, that's me. You've been a little sound. Do, do, do you want to talk about any of your personal journey? Or talk about anything um, in particular? Hang on, let me uh, have a drink first. <clears throat> Hydrated. Okay. Um, I I don't know. I mean, obviously, I, I don't I don't feel very um, like I, I don't feel like I've gotten very far regarding voice training things. Um, I haven't been doing it for a super long time, so like you know that's not in that sense. It's not particularly diff. Uh, it's not particularly weird that uh, I, I I feel like this, but. You know, at the same time, it's uh, it, it's very. I, I, I said this a lot, but voice training is very difficult for me, but just because it's very um, it's hard to feel and see kind of progress and I don't know, kind of evidence of what you're doing. I guess that feels like it's going anywhere. Yeah. Because compared to something like art. Um, again, I, I see this a lot. Like when you when you draw things, um, you're I mean you're, you're drawing something, right? And um, obviously it's going to be different for for other people. But at least for me, like whenever I draw something, um, like I can I can easily look at it and go like, okay, you know, like this obviously has areas to improve. But like, you know, with with what I've with what I've done here, like I, I've I've done this like you know to the best of my ability, and then next time it's going to be better. And you can just kind kind of keep repeating that. And, and slowly improve it, and that's like kind of how I've practiced art, really. You just keep doing it and get better at it. And like, obviously, like, I know it's the same for voice training, but it's so much more difficult because, you know, uh, in, in, the, in the first place, I think like when it, when it comes to drawing, you can just kind of, um, even if you're not super, you know, even if, even if like lots of people say like, oh, I can't draw at all and stuff, but with some like, you know, if, if you, if you prompt people, if you kind of, um, you know, put a picture in front of them and be like, can you, can like draw this flower or something, uh, most people will be able to do more than they, uh, like kind of like to admit, I suppose. Um, yeah. there's like, you, you can kind of produce good results and see clearly how to get there it's like oh you're drawing you're, you're, you you know what you need to do right like obviously there are going to be some more complicated techniques uh, as you uh progress the ladder but like at a very kind of basic level in terms of drawing itself you're you're just kind of drawing the right shapes that you want right it's quite kind of easy to grasp at a basic level and, and the um, same thing applies to <clears throat> voices but in a different way because your voice yeah, is something that's... that you develop at a very, very young age, and it grows with you. And it, it, it's something that you've had for years, decades, even, in some cases. In some cases, you know, 30 years. It, 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 it's something that has been with you for so long, and it's so ingrained in you. And when you try to stray away from it, you're body's just trying to tell you I'm not used to this um but we can work on it like for me I blew out my vocal cords multiple times doing my training and there would be times where like I just cannot talk at all just if you have mm -hmm. to talk to me just 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 text me please and it's something That's that you can just push a little more and a little more and it's you know you gotta you got, you got be mindful of your health with it. Sorry, you were saying something? Yeah, I was saying that's basically what happened to me too. Was, But mine was because I wasn't doing vocal training. Um, that 
because of I was so used to talking a certain way and as my vocal cords like thickened and like changed while I was uh, on HRT uh, I just normal speech strained the hell out of my voice talking hurt so I was kind of forced to teach myself and get used to like a certain tone talking more from my chest and things like that just so it didn't hurt um but i think tying it into the art topic in just a tiny way that i think the comparison kind of works but also with when it comes to voices and something people are dysphoric about i feel like it's uh kind of extra personal and that's probably why like people can get kind of more frustrated more hurt or upset over the fact if they don't feel like they're making progress um because i was there and it took many it literally took like years of just having idle recordings snapchats i sent people things like that mm -hmm. and then having to like go back and and li listen to them watch them and be like okay hold on wait a minute it's subtle but the changes are there there is some progress um so like literally for my, some of my friends that start transitioning or voice training and things like that i tell them start a voice diary yeah, start a voice voice diary and it, it literally it's just something to kind of look back upon um from point one to where you are now so you can actually see the change as as uh as uh quote unquote cringe as it is to hear yourself talk it helps it helps it a lot well he does I tell so many people, just like, make a monthly recording of yourself, just saying the same line over and over, and you'll hear the progress as it goes. Yeah, I, I've heard Osho's progress. Osho's doing great. Osho's doing mm -hmm. great on, on her, uh, like, vocal training. She's awesome. Uh, I, th thank you. I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure I agree, but, uh, I, 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 I appreciate that. No, no one ever does agree. I, I, I feel you're doing a great job. And it's just the fact that you're trying alone is great. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it just kind of, um, the, the, the comparison I was going for, I guess, yeah. um, with the art thing, talking about, um, that. I, I guess you know when it when it again. Sorry, I know, I know I'm talking about art. There, there is a reason that I'm saying this. Um, what, what I was trying to say is that there's um, you know when it when it comes to art, um, I, I I can make progress and it feels again. I, the, the note about it being less personal is definitely a, a good point. Like I definitely get more frustrated with vocal things, but it also feels like. Um, it feels very even after like I, I've obviously watched so so many videos and stuff talking about like here's methods you can use to you know, uh, change your voice and stuff like that. Um, I, I've, I've looked at lots and lots of stuff regarding that, but even after all of that, it still feels like I don't. Uh, it still feels like there are there are some kind of fundamental things that I, I can't even kind of grasp if if that makes any sense. It feels like it rather than it being like rather than it being like small steps that I can walk up, it feels like there's a giant step in front of me that I can't even when I jump, I can't even reach it. So I like no matter what I do, I, I feel like I can't I can't reach there. I don't know how to kind of get up there and like begin almost begin like practicing it and making it into something more like, you know, being able to sustain it and being able to like kind of, you know, perfect it towards something that would, you know, sound better and better. Like it feels yeah. like I can't even kind of reach that first step in a way. No, I I, um, I know exactly what you mean. I, I hit that hit that proverbial wall step as well and mm. for me it was just a matter of trying to find a new technique or trying to find personally trying to find a new method to overcome it or get around it or get through it mm. like my, my that's right oh sorry i'm sorry <laughs> no, i was just gonna say 
taking everything that you just said, but putting yet after it. You can't find your way around it yet, but you keep working. Yeah. And mm -hmm. for me, it was also a, a, if you can have like a good friend, someone you trust that like when uh, you have not not the entire time you're with them, but like say you're out to dinner or something and you're here with your buddy and you're like, all right, I'm going to be trying to do these vocal things while we're out here at dinner or chilling, whatever. Um, if you hear me break it, let me know. And it's just so it's someone that like as you get back into that your comfort zone, what your comfort zone is for your body and you're trying to get out of it, they can kind of snap you back like, all right, hold on, you're, you're getting back to it. You're getting back to it. It's time. It, vocal training, remember? And you're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then you mm -hmm. start over. Because that's that's what I did. I had a buddy. So I wasn't I wasn't climbing the proverbial mountain alone to say I had someone to yeah. kind of help me along the way. It helps if you have a Sherpa. Mm hmm. But opening up like opening up to someone like that, especially because vocal dysphoria is no joke. It's people feel really vulnerable with it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it's 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 hard to kind of uh i guess like express that vulnerability to someone and have them there to kind of call you out on it but it can be really helpful because it's all habit it's all your like uh index was saying where you're you're for years and decades uh your body is used to doing one thing uh, and you're just trying to break that habit mm -hmm. to build a new one yeah, and th like I said, I'm not a professional voice actor. I'm an amateur voice actor. But even then, I, I wasn't, like, into voice acting before I started my journey. And if I'm, if like, like if, it's, it's, if someone like me was able to start, you know, here and crack and break constantly and stumble along the way, and make it to here anyone can exactly anyone can do it no matter how hard it looks it's still possible so i got you back oshio no 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 worries on that okay thank you i also got the mallet ready no <laughs> And it's it's like like I always tell everyone it's a it's a marathon not a race it's it's about endurance yeah. and you you keep trying and you keep going yeah it, there's like other wonderful people in the community who will say some uh, like so much of the same and like it, not not just on my channel but like on other channels from other sources like Eldritch Grandpa will tell you the same thing other amazing people in the community will tell you the same thing. Like, there, there's, there's no one wrong way to go about it. There's no one end goal, and you, you have plenty of people who are backing you up along the way. They might not be there physically, but they're there in spirit to help you along the way. But. That's that's just me and my two cents. Ah. Yeah. And everyone's two cents adds up eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'd like to ask a couple of questions to you all. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um. What 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 was your personal like aha moment where you're like I'm perfectly happy with this right now and like what what, what was t t tell the story of your aha moment if you've had it let's start with Biddles I can you what, what do you mean by aha moment like where you're like I'm comfortable with who I am I'm happy with where I'm at and that's what matters most. Ah. Uh, Cause I, I wanna illustrate that there's like it it's different for people and 
it happens at different times and it happens in different ways. No, I get it. I I'm just trying to think. No, did he um, come back to you? I I yeah, give me a second. Because I, I know Ray was talking about like how uh, his aha moment was like during the whole quarantine and all that. Oh, yeah. Like for me, my talk aha talk moment of it. like, oh, I want to be an artist and an author was during the quarantine as well. Yeah, mine was, it was, like I said, I it was lockdown. I had money. I, there was literally, literally, I, I don't know what happened. A switch flipped somehow. There was a sale on clothes and I was like, but these clothes are kind of like feminine. Why would I buy them? Earrings? On sale? Why would I buy them? I can't buy those. Those are feminine things. And then I, I don't know what clicked in my brain at that point where I was just like, but what I can I can wear these and it's fine because I'm wearing them. They're not feminine. They're just clothes that I like. They're they're jewelry that I like. Because when I when I first trans like was like, yeah, I'm trans. I don't want anything to do with being feminine at all. This is terrible. This is whatever. I threw everything away. I threw away like ridiculous things. I threw away necklaces. I threw away earrings, bracelets, rings, whatever. If it was even stereotyped, remotely feminine, I got rid of it. And then during lockdown, it was just like, I was looking at stuff and I was like, I want this though. Why am I telling myself no? What am I afraid of? Um, and I just kind of had that moment that it was like, if it's, I'm here to be me, I'm not here to do whatever social standard there is going on. If I want something, I'm going to buy it. If yeah. I want to dress whatever way, I'm going to dress that way. Oof. And I'm going to use this government funded check to buy it. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's what, that's what I did. And Hell then yeah. from then on, yeah, from then on, I just kind of like, I, I stopped being so straight laced um, and the, the moment that I stopped being so like straight laced and stopped like denying the stuff about myself that wa was remotely feminine, I kind of reached like, yeah, that's not going to change, but that's all right. My voice isn't going to get any deeper, at least like without, you know, if I'm not going to go ham with vocal training. And, and you know what? That's fine. I, I took a lot of steps. It's been a long journey, but I am finally comfortable. And yeah, and it all started with buying earrings on sale. That's <laughs> technically the ultimate goal. Like yeah. I, I, I know the whole I know this episode's called No Goals. But that's kinda like the ultimate goal. <laughs> Fuck, I've I've become my own I mean, apotheosis. Well I mean, because like you can have I say goals change over time. Yeah. So, like, just because you conquer one goal doesn't mean you're done. There's still more. There's still more to be done. Um, so, yeah, even though, like, I conquered that, there's still other stuff. Like, I, like, I do want to get better with my voice. I feel like when I went on testosterone, it kind like, at first I thought it ruined my voice. But in reality, all it did was it just gave me like a range and an ability that my body is not used to. Yeah. Um, and who knows, and maybe I have next to just year you'll have a lumberjack it. phase. Maybe you'll go from golf oh, dog no. to lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, actually I kind of already went through that. Red flannels were how I got through college. Yeah. I feel you there. For me, I, I'm just, I, I found comfort in hoodies like I, I know i know the whole like dysphoria hoodie but like i love wearing different kinds of hoodies i love wearing you know different hoodies different like uh comfortable pants i i just i just like wearing stuff that makes me comfortable and that's you know that's that's fine doesn't oh matter. hi mark oh hi mark doesn't matter if it's uh doesn't matter if it's feminine doesn't matter if it's masculine i just like wearing hoodies they're they're comfy i have this one hoodie that's like got a big like big old pouch it's you could put your hand through one end and it pops out the other because it's like a kangaroo pouch. And it's got oh, this oversized hood that I can pull down and be all Palpatine with it. And I'm just, just like, you know what? This is my personal space. I want to take a nap on the train hoodie. 
Does it, though, it, though it does also make me look like a weed dealer. <laughs> I mean, it's better than the clothes I was wearing. People thought I was a hobo on the street with how I dressed in college. <laughs> Very bad, because I, I did. I, I refused to shop in, in any other section besides men's. So I was wearing clothes that didn't fit me, um, because I'm, I'm small. But I didn't care. But I was wearing very bag baggy, kind of raggedy clothes because I was doing anything possible to be the exact opposite of feminine. Um, so yeah, I kind of, I kind of I kinda dressed like a hobo. I was a thrift store grandpa. <laughs> I love that term, thrift store grandpa. It's so good. So, Biddles, would you like to talk about your personal, uh, aha uh -huh moment? Ah, uh, I didn't think about it. I think it was like, when I was 26, I, I finally decided like, man, I really don't like myself. I'm stuck living at home and I haven't even like started to transition and I knew I was trans at 14. So I was like, screw it. I'm, I'm moving partway across the country and starting my life. And I did. And it felt amazing. There was no one I knew and I could just be myself without worry. So you, 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 so start, you started your transition at 14 and your aha moment was at 26? Oh no, I, I knew I was trans at 14. Oh. I didn't start transitioning until 27. Uh, I oh, lived I, in I'm a sorry. very bad place. <laughs> but, yeah, like, like that, that, that's a whole nother thing. Like, you know what? There, there's no one wrong way to do it. And, like, for the people that, like, p people that talk about, like, you're so brave to transition at like, such such and such age i think it's more like my personal thing i think it's more brave the later you transition because it's like i can't believe you've spent all that time bottling up like your happiness just for the mm -hmm. sake of like adhering to the norm you know what i mean oh absolutely like th th there was a story about this like 65 good. year old man who uh who started his transition and he's like, I spent most of my life up until this point just loathing a part of me and I'm finally happy to be happy. Mm -hmm. Like, good for him. Good it, for it's him. It's a huge weight off the shoulders. And it's those that are also particularly inspiring because it's one of those that I, whenever I think about like any regrets or like, what if, what if, my future again goals what if my future goals change it's the people and the generations like that that give me the like okay you know what if i change my mind in the sense of like i want to go back on testosterone or or finding different ways to be comfort comfortable with myself uh it doesn't matter how old i am because look at these guys they're doing it i can do it too yeah it's comforting Especially as someone who transitioned near 30, it's it's nice to make some friends my age who also transitioned near 30, because it's like, okay, we're in this together. We know what it's like to transition, you know, in like the trans community, transitioning late. There's no late. There's al It's always the best time. There's no wrong time, I guess that's better to say. There's no wrong time, there's no wrong way to do it. Mm-hmm. Especially because nowadays everyone, like, for me, I didn't have time to even think about myself and what I wanted for my future until I graduated from college. So I started transitioning when I was 25. Because uh, mm -hmm. I was out of college, I was finally, like, I had time to think. I had time to think about exactly why I was unhappy and why, because, like, I, at first I was like, I'm just happy being androgynous. That's fine. And then once life settled down and I could think for myself, I realized that's not really what I wanted. Like, did it make me happy to leave people kind of questioning on like, oh, is that, a, is that a guy or a chick? It's, you know, my favorite thing is walking down the street and people go, sir, ma'am, sir. And I'd be like, oh, hell yeah, that's great. Um, and then I just was like, but why am I not? Why am I still like that's that just doesn't feel like enough. Um, 
And it, it really took just having the time to even think about it. Because I also didn't even know trans was a thing uh, until I was like like 20. It took many articles on the news for me to realize, hold on, like, that's a that's a thing. I always thought it was only like a male to male to female thing. Or I remember being a kid and being like, wow, I wish there was like, there's drag queens. I wish there were drag kings. There are. I just didn't know about them. Um, and so, yeah, I lived a very sheltered life and I didn't know anything until I was much, much older. Same. I actually put words and feelings and thoughts together. You okay there, Osho? Yeah, I'm just listening. D d like, I, 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 hope, I, I hope this puts into perspective for anyone who's like not had their aha moment of like, I'm perfectly happy with where I am. Like, whether you're in the audience, whether you're listening to this on the VOD, I, I hope this puts into perspective. Like, hey, um, you, you're the, the moment of being like, I'm happy with who I am is the most important don't th there's don't don't worry you your happiness is what is paramount your comfort is what is paramount like oh i don't like how i sound uh well there are ways to help with that and th there are ways that like you will you will reach that comfort moment and that's quote unquote the ultimate goal and once you're at that goal the goal is remaining there. That's my personal philosophy. Would you like to talk a little bit about your journey, Osho? Um, I... So, like, I... Uh, I've, like, you know... I, I wouldn't say I've known I was trans for a long time. Well, I have for a long time, but I've known that I like, you know, I, I, I've had thoughts of like, oh yeah, I, I, I'd like to, I'd like to be a girl. Um, <laughs> basically, as long as I can remember, uh, to be honest. Um, since I was very, very young, um, and I cannot tell you why it took me. I, I did not tell a single soul about that for. Um, very long time um i i was i don't know but i was uh maybe in my 20s or slightly before then um so i like i i i often feel like you know there's the um like the, the missed opportunity kind of trans feel uh, which which I often get because of that, and like it, it's silly because like I I don't I don't come from a place where like that sort of thing is super kind of discriminated against. Like um, like I'm, I'm lucky to live in an area that's not like super uh, anti-trans. In fact, there are lots of very like supportive. Um, I I didn't know this before, but I know now. Like um, there are lots of like, universities and stuff, and just areas around here that are very kind of pro. Uh, pro-trans and like other things like that um, and like my parents as well uh, are very uh, uh, are very supportive of it so just the fact that I didn't that I, I just kept it bottled up for such a long time is like almost it's, it's very bizarre and I often wonder why on earth I, I did that and even now like I haven't um, like I, I'm not like transitioning or anything um, but I did kind of recently have the brainwave, I guess, of like, why am I like doing nothing? Um, I I feel like probably a part of why I I did nothing and why I kept it bottled up for so long is so almost a sense of complacency, like a sense of. I don't want to leave what's comfortable and what's not that, you know, not that this is comfortable, I guess, but I don't want to leave like, I, I, 
it's a fear of change, right? Like it's a fear of things being different. It's a thing, fear of like, you know, the the people around you. Better the devil you know, almost, yeah. Um, like, yeah, th that kind of is it, like, because it's, it's kind of like, I don't hate, I don't like loathe with all my, with all my guts um, being biologically male. Like, I, I don't absolutely despise it. I definitely uh, don't enjoy it um, as much as, you know, I the, I don't know, alternative, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, I, that kind of fear of moving forward almost, I feel like has held me back for a lot of, uh, just, just a lot of my life. And I kind of recently was like, can, can you just stop doing this, Osho? Can you just like make some progress? Um, and like, that's, I mean, part of why I, I started the I started trying to figure out voice training is for streaming stuff, really. But then, much more recently, I kind of just figured like I I really should take more steps to you know to to do to have an appearance that I that I would like more um, and things like I I ordered like a hair removal thing. Quite recently, um, which I still haven't started to use because I'm, again, uh, being too lax about it. Um, yeah, and... I, I tried using an epilator recently myself, and mm. um, it didn't have the proper face guard for it. And I'm like, you know what? I really want to try it. Big mistake. You can you use an epilator on your face? Oh uh, yeah, yeah it, I, that's what I do. Yeah, th th there's oh. one specifically for the facial region. But uh, it, it, it didn't come. It didn't come I... with like the facial guard, and I'm like, oh, ow. Oh. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine. But yeah, I I know what you mean, Osio. Like, spending all that time being like, you know, why why haven't I told anyone about this? Like, I I had that same thing. Like, why haven't I told anyone about this? Why 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 am I just read? You know what? When I was 25, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. T mm -hmm. Time to be happy kind of be happy and i'm like you know what we're out we're out we're doing this doesn't matter what anyone thinks doesn't matter what anyone thinks trans proud i'm happy that's what matters to me exactly I'm so, so, sorry to cut you off uh while, while you're talking no about no that that word that word you use there waiting is like i think um a very relevant word because it is kind of like being being stuck waiting and you're kind of almost like foolishly being like oh maybe maybe something will happen and like things will get better and it's like no if you want things to get better you need to make those changes yourself like it's not just going to fall into your lap um mm. you're not just going to magically transition um as, as much as you might desire that uh, through some illogical means, uh, you need to you need to do things yourself. But it's so easy to just kind of be like, oh, maybe maybe oh maybe a better opportunity will come. Maybe better um, like surgeries and procedures and things and hormone therapy will will happen in the future. You can make um, the opportunity yourself. That's yeah. Mm. And, and if, some, if something comes along along the way, hey, you know what? Then it'll just be a quick. It'll just be something to help you even further along the way. Hmm. But yeah, the, the, I, I spent a lot of my time like, you know what? Why 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 haven't I done this sooner? Um. I I'm I'm perfectly content with where I am now. I think the like, part of it is also learning to not beat yourself up over not doing things sooner or not mm -hmm. acting sooner. Because like I said earlier, it's it's a marathon. You're you're there, you're going at your own pace. Um when when you get to it, you'll get to it. But uh stuck getting stuck in the loop of like beating yourself up about it, about like not 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 starting sooner not not doing anything sooner 
etc. It, it doesn't matter. Um, cause it's your own journey to happiness. And like how we see, or like we talked about earlier, the, the person in their, in their sixties that started transitioning in their sixties. Um, with the when doesn't matter. It's the, how you get there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And for some people, it depends on like what level they want to do and what level of comfort they want. Also, welcome on in, Raiders. Whether you're here to see your head or not, now, please grab a book before you leave. My name is Index Page, and we're having a talk show today about overcoming uh, not just vocal dysphoria, but like dysphoria in general, and be- finding comfort. Finding that comfort. Like for me, you know what? I'm happy with where I am. Um, will I get the surgery? Maybe. I'm comfortable with where I am, though, currently. And that's fine. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Kyra. <sighs> ah, you know, for the last fifteen minutes of the podcast, I'd like to d- direct d- direct it to the audience. I-, I always like to do this at the end of the episodes. Would anyone in the audience like to ask any questions of me or my lovely, lovely guests? Would anybody like to ask any questions? Otherwise, I, I I can like come up with some myself. Yeah, I'm I'm literally super open. I will answer anything and everything, just yeah. because I wish there was someone to answer questions for me, both when I started and while I was growing up. <laughs> but there were little to no resources, Uh-oh. or just some questions people don't talk about, or things that people just. Good thing it is in 15 minutes. There's a big storm approaching. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. There, there, there's a big storm oh, approaching fine. me right now. Actually, hold on. I need to check because I had a notification. I am a storm that is approaching. Don't you dare. I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> Motivated! Hello, Cat. Iggy's. Iggy's is one of my lovely, lovely rig sibs. On my podcast episode, welcome to the Transcribe Cast. For those of you who are new here, my name is Index Page, and I am a 15-year strong voice actor. And today we are having an episode of the Transcribe Cast, a podcast all about tackling ideology and misconceptions about dysphoria, specifically vocal dysphoria. But today we're talking more about finding comfort in who you are as a person, not just to, not just physically, not just in your voice, but just in general. Find that sense of zen. And we're currently doing the I'm an open book section. Get get it, get it, get it. I'll Very see clever. myself out. <clears throat> I, uh, of course I recognize you. you, you you're a lovely duo, Greg Seb. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I love the new model as well. I love how sassy the new model is. But, uh, yeah, this is the open book section. If anyone has any questions for me or my lovely guests, feel free to ask them. Ah, uh, Dirty Tristan asked a question. Oh, yes. I have a question. How do you deal with self-doubt? And how do you overcome it as someone who doesn't like their voice? So, for me personally, overcoming the self-doubt was with the help of people around me and with the help of listening to myself on a recording again and again and again. Like, I weigh myself every week and see where I'm at with my goals. I did the same thing with my voice. I picked... My, my vocal coach told me to pick a character. Pick a character in media. Whether it's a video game, whether it's anime, whether it's a movie, pick someone whose voice I admire. And try to shoot for that range. And that that that, that was like my first goalpost. Like, I gotta get to this range and make my journey towards it. And I recorded myself, I listened to myself back, I kept doing it again and again and again until the impression became second nature. For me, it was, like you said, a lot of support from other people. Because I... Do I hate my voice in a dysphoric manner now? 
No. But do I like my voice? Mm, yeah, I'm getting there. But what's been helping me is uh, streaming and other also other people. But mostly with streaming because I have to go back and listen to myself. So it's kind of just like getting getting used to how you sound and if you don't like how you sound like what index said with uh recording yourself and practicing and getting to goals and then the more you listen to that the more you listen to it as you practice you just kind of get you get more comfortable with it yeah so it, it just takes time and if you if you do the same thing that i do you'll be able to do what i do nowadays uh you know i can i, I like i like flexing i can really really twist my voice and uh you know what that that also comes in, in the in the uh uh the lane of doing impressions and different voices because uh like right now i am mitrod of the new jersey mitrods i'm probably terrorizing my guests i'm sorry about that hey you know me i'm a gremlin <laughs> oh i love it But th th that that's another whole thing, like singing, impressions, stuff like that. That's that's a whole another beast. Talking alone is difficult in a new voice, but impressions in another voice or singing in another voice—that's that's that's a whole another monster. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know for me, I, it was a lot of pushing myself because I, I didn't have a lot of people around me when I started to transition. So it was very much I was doing it by myself. But as for, for dealing with the self-doubt, like when I first started, it was more, I'm tired of feeling bad for myself. That's me personally. It was just, I'm tired of feeling bad. I'm going to push myself as hard as I can to make change. And yeah, you know, sometimes I still don't like my voice, but it's like everyone else has been saying, like you make recordings, you just change slightly every so often. It's just practice, practice, and just slowly coming to terms with what you sound like and where you'd like to be. Agreed. Because even outside of a dysphoric thing, I feel like so many people don't like uh, hearing themselves like like even outside yeah, of being that's trans quite a common yeah thing it's cuz you how you sound in your like head like when you're when you're hearing your own voice will never sound like what what you actually sound like but because that's what you that's the only thing you ever hear that's why that's what you're used to so that's why then when you hear a recording you're like oh oh my god that's what i sound like but, but it's it, just because you're not used to it. it. It should also be like not only being comfortable with hearing yourself in a recording, but also being comfortable with hearing your own head voice. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it should be a combo of both. Like, I could yeah. listen to myself back on recordings. Be like, when when I first heard myself in recordings when I started like VTube and all that, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And then Me I'm like, too. you know what? I'm happy. I'm happy, happy, happy. That, that alone. Also, like, the whole, like, putting yourself on stage and talking for hours and hours on end, that alone will give you a lot of, like, vocal training. Mm-hmm. Very true. Like, when I did my first 12-hour stream, and I after that, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take a two-day vacation and just become a non-speaking monk. I'll see you in two days. So, and what? then Index was never heard from again. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me ask you all another question. Who who is who is someone in media, whether it's a fellow VTuber, whether it's in a video game, whether it's in a cartoon, any form of media, who is someone whose like voice talents you really really admire? Oh, mine's gonna be such a weepy answer. 
Let me make sure I say his name right. Um, he, just because it's a, a Utaite singer, so like, uh, there's someone that does Vocaloid covers. Actually, no, I, I think it's... It's a toss-up, because it's, uh, there's a Utaite singer who... Their vocal range is ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's uh, Miyashita Yu. Um, they can do like super feminine covers, and it sounds ridiculously good. They can do a lot more deeper voiced covers, and it still sounds ridiculously oh, good. All the same guy. Uh, M Y or M I Y A S H I T A. Yep. It's just their vocal range. Um. Uh, and then, yeah. then also like a Queen Bee, just because I love them and them sticking the middle finger up to uh, gender norms in Japan. Yeah. Uh, for me, it would have to be Porter Robinson. Ooh. True. Because w when I heard some of the Porter Robinson songs and I heard like the female vocals, I'm like, I wonder who does the female vocals for Porter Robinson. I googled it. It's like Porter Robinson. What? Yep. He sings in a different tonal key and just does a slight, slight synthesizer to like sound like a completely different person while singing. And that that alone is like talent to me. Yep. That, that alone is like admirable. That's exactly why I love uh, uh, Miyashita, you. Because it's when, oh, when I the heard the NPC. first. Hey, it's Jeff. <laughs> That's exactly why I I love I love them because when I was first hearing um what they would say was like the like female vocal covers, I'm like, oh okay. And then I look and it's still the same person doing the vocals. I was like, what what do you how mean you do that? Same how you do that? Doing these <laughs> yeah, literally. Like how you do that? <laughs> but yeah, that that's I, I guess like Porter Robinson is like in the same vein as that. So let let, let me ask you, Osho, Bettles, who who is someone who's like vocal talents you super admire? Um, I I have an answer that's kind of the same. Uh, there's a um, there's a there's a Japanese uh, singer who does like uh, various like anime covers and songs and original songs and stuff like that. Um, and for a lot, so I found I found this song. This this song uh, was was how I how I found uh, you know, this this person. Um, the song being called "I Want to Be a Girl," uh, which is by Mafu Mafu. And for the longest time, literally year, like at least a year, um, over a year. No, actually, yeah, because it came out in twenty nineteen. So yeah, literally years. Um, I didn't really like look into the rest of their work or I just I just like liked the song and I was like this is a great song I really like this song and I was absolutely convinced that uh, it was sung as a uh, it's, it's like mostly sung uh, in, a, in a girl's voice and there's like one part where it's like a, a guy's voice and I was like oh it's like two people singing um, no the whole thing is sung by a guy um, and it is unbelievable like it is actually i i still can hardly believe that the 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 female vocals in this song are a guy singing it because it's like it's 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 nothing it's, it's not like anything i've ever heard it's completely again like i i, I was completely and utterly convinced it was a girl like there's absolutely nothing right? that would that would make you even think for a moment and it's admirable it just, to, like, it just doesn't at all sound like a guy like not even the slightest bit it's like super high pitched it's like super anime and kawaii and like it just like it's like how on earth how on earth does like and this is without like you know uh voice modification like software or anything this is just they can just sound like that um which is just it's, it's insane it's crazy and the fact that you can and that's without you know um, that's without surgery and stuff like that as well, and the fact that you can you can train yourself to do that um, is like yeah, any, things like can that train is to do that, and then it's just a matter of honing yeah, that talent. That's that's what like drives me to to keep doing vocal training because yeah. it's like I I I could do that. I could I could get to that point, and my God, do I want to? Like whenever you know. 
I know, and I was probably a bit like uh, depresso at the start of the uh, the, the podcast, and it's like I, I, I currently, um, I, I'm currently in like a, I don't know, a slump, I guess, um, regarding voice, voice training. But like videos like that, when I watch them, it like just ignites that fire again. I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, and it's gonna be awesome. I'm, I'm sorry, Ooh. I'm sorry, you were feeling bad at the start. Oh no, not not as in like because of the start of the show. I just mean like in in general, oh. like these past few weeks, like I've I've been kind of like. Um, well, no, it's my my personal you know, opinion. You've been slump. doing great, and like we've discussed today, hey, wherever you are in your journey, you're doing good. Yeah. Now, Biddles, who's someone whose voice talents you super admire? Um. Probably one of like my biggest idols growing up, and to this day is still up there, is uh, Billy West. Oh. Uh, it's just, he has, I find he has very incredible range, and like, he has the talent that I appreciate, which is he, being able to sing in character. That is something that still is just amazing to me. Like, it doesn't matter what character he's doing, he can sing as them. And it's, it's pretty good. That, that is a very, very difficult talent. Because like when when you're singing, your your voice naturally wants to like go back to its comfort zone so that you can stay in that key. Mm -hmm. Like for for voice actors that sing as a different character or like do impressions and then sing, that alone is an amazingly monstrous talent. Right. So yeah, I I, I can I can totally vibe with that. Also, uh, let, let me look him up. It's just great. No, not Billy Joel. <laughs> I, 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 I type in Billy, and it's like, do you mean Billy Joel? No. Oh, the Who voice actor for Fry. Billy Joel. Yeah, he's like half the cast on Futurama, and I love it. He, he, he is Fry, a super Farnsworth, fan. Brannigan, Zoidberg. Like, he's all of the like. Ah, uh, yes, characters. that Brannigan. Wait, wait, seriously? Oh my god, I never knew this. Oh yeah, he does a lot of voice work. <laughs> Wait, that's amazing! Holy shit! That's that's and, like it, it, plus it's like <laughs> these characters don't even sound alike. Fry does I not know. sound anything like, like Scott I... Brannigan. It's like the same voice actor. He's he's great. Exactly. He he's insanely talented, and I'm glad that like he's starting to get the recognition because I for a long time he always kind of got overshadowed by Tom Kenny. But he's like he's he's starting to get the recognition more so he deserves. He deserves it. So let, let, let me ask and would anyone in the audience like to ask another question? We we can we have we have another ten minutes. Or would you guys like to talk about anything in particular or any any big projects that you're working on? Like Um, I don't know. I mean, we could we could kind of talk about like goals, I guess, and things we like, might want this, to. This, this is a point where like you could talk about anything, like not yeah. not not, well, not, e not even like dysphoria or anything like that, because like I I'd like my I'd like my guests to uh, you know talk a bit about themselves and be like, hey, uh, this is what I do. If you want to come and check out my stream. Oh I yeah, cannot. I mean yeah, we we can we, we we can talk about that. I can I can talk about myself a bit if you want me to. Um, yeah, well, I, I was kind of like uh, trying to trying to link it into obviously the 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 theme of this episode is sort of goal related, but um, yeah, I mean uh, if if uh, if if any of you here uh, are not super familiar with me, if it's your first time seeing me, uh, I guess I'll you know introduce myself and talk about what I do. Uh, I'm Oceanx. I'm a retro animated magical girl VTuber. And I, I do lots of art, and I'm also uh, kind of tied into what I was, um, yeah, well, the reason that I'm trying to do voice training is because I, well, one of the reasons I should say, um, I, I'd really like to basically do what Index does and um, be able to switch between kind of this voice and, you know, a very convincing uh, female voice. Uh, on stream as a kind of almost kind of using the the female voice as like an in-character voice I suppose um, but also just kind of have fun with mess around like I especially want to I especially would like to be able to do my my kind of intro the intro that you just heard about you know hello motion actor retro animated magical girl VTuber I want to be able to say that in a, a girl voice because I'd really like um, 
this almost ties back to what um uh i believe it was uh was it was it you ray who was talking about like um messing with people and making them think like uh hello um, yeah it was right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um that kind Grand of mode. thing like i've um for a long time um kind of on online on the internet um i've often enjoyed like i, I really get that that uh I, I really get the 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 appeal of that because i for a long time on on like the internet i've enjoyed the fact that the anonymity of it uh, means that when I'm interacting with people, uh, lots of lots of people have and like still do. Um, they're like, I don't really know whether you're a guy or a girl, um, and I that's that's a very um, it's very fun. It's just there's there's something very um, almost playful about it and like mysterious. Um, but the the ability to kind of play around with that and mess with people's expectations and I think that's a really uh, it is, it's a really like interesting talent and it's a really um in terms of streaming it's a very like valuable thing to do because it can kind of produce lots of interest and like uh get people kind of get people talking i guess about uh about what's going on yeah. um so and then in addition to that of course like it will just be like fulfilling for me and stuff um and and actually uh, because i play D as well uh, it's something that will be. Uh, I, I kind of didn't even realize this. Like I, I'd been doing vocal training stuff for a while, and then one of my friends was like, "Oh yeah, and you can like uh, you know voice female characters and stuff in D and D." I was like, "Oh my god, wait, I can! Mm -hmm. wait, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I play D and D every single week, and I didn't even consider that." Um, so yeah, there, there are lots of like there are lots of really cool kind of benefits to it um, that go beyond just kind of trans uh, fields, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, Bibbles or Ray, would, would either of you like to talk about, like, what you what you do on stream, or, like, what, what s some, like, big projects you're working on? Oh, how um, do you prepare yeah. your voice before starting stream? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll field that question really quick. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, uh, y you know how, like, artists will sometimes, like, do, like, stretches, like, flex their fingers, like, roll their wrists, and, like, get... get like, artists will do that with their hands, uh, weightlifters will, like, do some preparation, like, they'll do stretches, like, a lot of times it's just a matter of stretching and, like, getting things ready. I will just do, like, vowel movements, but with my mouth, like, and, like, the red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, she sells seashells down by the seashore. It's just a matter of, like, doing some warm-ups to, like, have yourself be ready for it. That that's 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 my personal take on like how do you prepare your voice before stream? Because if you're gonna be streaming, depending on how long you're gonna be streaming, you might uh you, you might need those little warm ups so you don't blow your vocal cords out. Also drink water. Oh yeah, also drink water before stream. <laughs> and uh tea with honey after stream. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Lifesaver. So, Ray, you, you were talking about some personal projects. Uh, speaking of hydrate. Yeah. So, uh, hi, I'm Ray, uh, resident dino dog on Twitch that I'm just here to draw funny pictures and be a gremlin. Um, I I don't have many super big projects I'm working on. I mostly just uh, am an artist that's always I'm working on commissions. Um, I like drawing monsters. I like drawing anime boys and whamming. Wham. Um we love drawing whammon. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm cursed. <laughs> I'm a coke addict, but of the cola kind. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, it's it's not much, but I, but because it went in my brain as uh, Oshio was talking about it. Oshio, because you said your, your magical girl intro um, was, uh, something that you want to be able to like like really project that feminine voice into i think yeah. we just found your your recording practice that yeah, that is, yeah. Um, i've i've actually like i didn't kind of realize this initially but when i did think about 
uh, kind of a few weeks ago, I think it was actually when I kind of realized this, I was like, why don't I use that then as my, like when you, when you do voice training, there's often talk about like having a trigger to kind of uh, yeah. put you into the voice. Um, I was like, why don't I use that as the trigger? Um, so yeah, that's like um, something that I'm uh, trying to use as a, you know, yeah, I think I think I think that's a I think that's a good yeah. one to start, and that one will especially yeah. uh, show just like how how much you grow with each level of practice. Yeah, so it's like me with my intro. It's Ray, a short for a Honibus, resident Dino Dog here on Twitch that may or may not also be in jail for my crimes, but yeah, don't worry about crimes. it. Oh, Linlin, thank crimes. you for so much for the Prime sub. Oh, thanks, doll. Now then, Biddles, would you like to talk about any big projects you're working on to talk about yourself before we uh, wrap up? Sure. Uh, so actually, currently, I'm going through a whole redesign. Like, full everything. Ayo? So, like, like a rebrand? Not rebrand, just redesign. Um, I'm actually going to make myself even cartoonier than I currently am. And like oh. I'm changing everything on my streams to even fit more cartoony. Um, will you finally be in Technicolor? No. <laughs> Bittles like now in Technicolor. That's a joke on my streams constantly that my model is actually in color and I just put <laughs> filters on. <laughs> Chad hates it because one day I'm going to show that I actually am in color. Um. But yeah, I, I'm kind of just going through a redesign and just, I'm going to be changing a bunch of stuff up. Uh, otherwise, like, I'm really just pushing myself into voice acting because I've got a few roles already. Hell yeah! I need to work on my range. I need to work on getting some roles myself. It's, it's hard. It's like throwing sticky notes at a dartboard. Yeah. It's a hard, it's a hard job. You're going to do it. Is, is, that, is that all you wanted to say? Yeah, there's not much I can talk about right now just because I'm changing everything. Nah, I feel that. And as always, for everyone that's new to the channel, my name is Index Page, spirit of the library and patron of its namesake. May you find your book in this place. I am a 15-year hobbyist voice actor. I'm also a burgeoning artist and author. Uh, my big projects I'm working on are getting my books back up off the ground and like starting up my Patreon content again, and then I'm going to start posting uh, my books to, like, Tapas and a couple of other sites. I would like to start working on comics, and uh, I, I, I just have too many stories that I want to share with the world, and I'm not going to stop making content until I share them all. But here's the kicker. I just keep coming up with more. Feel that one. That that is the the problem of creativity. It's that uh, sometimes it just doesn't stop coming. Like if anyone um, has come to my Discord, Osho has seen like the number of the number of book ideas that are on my Discord alone. <laughs> I I currently have like twelve book ideas total, which is a little uh, a little much, especially considering I want to turn them all into book series, not just like one-off novels. No, no, no. The, the series? I'm gonna be writing until after I'm in the grave. And that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Get those words out. Ah. Oh, sorry, doing one last stretch. Uh, we will be having to wrap up because... Oh, God. Hold on, let, let me double check the skyline. Go away, water bottles. Okay, yeah, that's that's a that's a big sign. The sky is looking a little sickly yellow, and the clouds are looking pretty black right now. So, uh, I'm I'm sorry to cut this one short, but we will be having to wrap up here while I go and batten down the fucking hatches because there's a big storm coming this way. Best of luck to you. There's a storm coming. Hopefully I don't lose power, because that would piss me off. I, I hope everything is all right. Uh, I would like to say, Basically. once again, thank you to my lovely guests. Ray Draw Stuff. It's me. 
Ocean X. Hi. And Biddles the Clown, aka Some Clown Girl. See you around, folks. YouTube, thank you for being here tonight, and thank you so much for the resurgence of the transcribe cast. I'll see you in the next episode, YouTube. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. See ya.